Hello everyone, how are you doing today? So we're gonna continue our Saturday evening series and today we're talking about dealing with relationship fears. In my previous teaching, I spoke about dealing with delays and one of the things I said about delay is this. Number one, the reason why some people are delayed is this, they are stuck in the past. So what that means is that although they're no longer dating this person again, there's a hurt, there's a connection they have with someone in the past that is actually hindering and preventing them from stepping into a relationship. Sometimes it's a guy that is hoping that a girl will walk back into his life and is not just able to make a decision to go forward. Sometimes it's a girl that has a strong emotional connection with someone in the past. Now that's the first thing. The second the reason why people are also delayed is this. Sometimes people are delayed because there's a hurt they also carry from the past. So these people are single, but they are not available. They are single, but emotionally, they are not available. You need to ask yourself, am I, not, am I single and am I available? A lot of people that divorce are single parents or single, but emotionally, because of the trauma of all the divorce, they are not available. But there are people that their emotional availability is not because of something that happened in a relationship. It's just because of the mentality or just because they've waited for such a long time. I'll give an example. So you see some people because they are heading towards 40 over 40, there is a mental disposition that they have that says, if I should be married, I can kill myself. I can't do anything. And you know, they are single, but emotionally they are exhausted. That's what it is. They don't have the expectation that someone is going to walk up to them and say, I love you. So even when it's time to like, just look good, dress up, meet a, meet a girl, meet a guy and do all those kind of things, you can really, really feel the negative emotion of exhaustion coming from them and they are single so such kind of persons you'll see sometimes they will bury themselves in so much work they will find a lot of activity to keep them busy just because they don't want to be able they want to be distracted from the marital need that they have Sometimes you even invite this kind of person, say, please come over, I want to invite you to someone. And you can see the look on the face that I'm so tired of being invited. Listen to me. I know you've been waiting and single for a while, but if you keep the attitude of being tired up, it's most likely you will not end up being married. If there's some hope in you, if there's some strength in you, the possibility that it will happen to you is really, really very high. So we spoke about that. We spoke about some other people that... Some other people, the reason why they're not married or the why they're delayed is this. They feel that they are not lovable. And sometimes that feeling comes from when you were young. You just feel as if, you know, because I'm not, I'm a guy and I'm not six foot tall. I don't have biceps. I don't drive a Range Rover. I don't have this amount of money in the car. Nobody, no girl is going to love me. And because you feel that way, because in your mind, you've tied love to money to position to influence to power one thing you have to know is this love is not perfect listen to me in your imperfect state you are lovable so this person not able to love sometimes it's a girl that says you know what i'm not light-skinned i'm not dark-skinned i'm not curvy i'm not shapey you know i don't have style i didn't go to this school so therefore guys will not like me and unfortunately, because you really feel that for some reason you are not lovable or you are not enough, that will be your practical life experience. People are going to find it difficult to love you. You know why? The price tag you put on yourself is how much others are going to offer you. So if you say, I'm, I don't deserve love, I'm not good enough, then others will come and say, we agree with you. You don't deserve love. You're not good enough. You're not such a great person. You're not such a wonderful person. That's what they were saying. And the reason most of you feel this way is this, because you really, media has conditioned our mind to really believe that for love to be really good, to be really genuine, to be really perfect, that, you know, you have to be a certain person, you have to have a certain thing and all of these things. But that's not how love is. Love is never perfect because human beings are greatly flawed. And let me say something to you. The more negative you feel about yourself, the more negative you, you would, the more negative love you experience. Have you noticed something? And people can mm. speak into this. The moment you were single, the moment you had nobody coming at you, everything was just dry. 
But the moment this guy came at you, he said dating, you got engaged. You know what happened? It was as if they were just released a whole lot of guys to come towards you. Everybody seemed to like you. Everybody seemed to like your vibe. Everybody seems to want to date you. I wonder what's going on. And what's going on is this, because your state of mind entered into a place of rest and abundance as regarding marital relationship, you began to attract such things because it's as a man think in his heart, so is he. As a man think in his heart. And, and this concept applies to a lot of things. The moment you feel as if nobody is coming and it's so dry, then nobody comes. But the moment you're able to enter into a place of abundance in your heart, you just see it coming a whole lot. So today, let's give, you know, I mean, you can go back to the other videos on Harvest TV, on Bola GID, on Instagram, and watch the videos. Send me your questions and post it, even as I'm teaching right now. So let's talk about dealing with relationship fears. So what are fe relationship fears? Relationship fears are the fears you have about relationship and marriage. What could the fear be? Number one, it could be the fear that I don't want to get divorced. It's not that I don't want to get, I'm just afraid I will get divorced. Number two, that my partner may not treat me with honor, love, and respect. Number three, that I may choose the wrong person. Number four, this person might just be there to take away my wealth. Number five, it might just be that I might find nobody that would genuinely love me. Number six, it might be that at my age, can I find someone to love me? Number seven, I will get married very late. Number eight, I will regret my marriage. Number nine, the person I marry is going to cheat me and it's going to cheat on me. And the list goes on and on and on. And if you have any relationship fears, put it in the comment that I have this relationship fears. And why is it important to treat relationship fear? Number one, because whatever is feared is attract. Fear attracts things. Fear is like a magnet. So, you know what I've seen? I've seen people that says, I will never marry someone that beats his partner. I see those people marry exactly someone that beats them up. And the reason why is that there's just something about the fear in their heart. And listen, it's the law of focus because when you have fear, fear dominates your thinking, dominates your mind, dominates everything. And whatever dominates your thought is amplified. You actually attract what you focus on. And because fear has filled your mind and about how you're going to date a time waster, you actually get to date a time waster. How you're going to marry someone that will not treat you so well, you actually get to marry someone that will not treat you so well. Because that's what you fear. Fear preoccupied your mind. It's a law of focus. Fear attracts. The second thing is this, I fear destroys. How does fear destroy? Fear destroys because you will begin to take steps that would actually become, you will begin to take negative steps that will destroy the love you want, the joy you want, the peace you want, the harmony you want. You will just become paranoid and start saying things that do not exist. You're going to see life through a lens that is very difficult to love because you are just afraid. So the harmony you built with this person, the love you've encountered, you begin to break it down just because you are afraid. The third thing that fear does is this, fear paralyzes. Oh yes, fear paralyzes. Fear does what? Paralyzes. And how does fear paralyze? I'm gonna share how fear paralyzes with you. What happens to you is this, when you are afraid, you will just not be able to give of yourself. I don't know if you've been in a relationship where you were not able to give of yourself to the person that you were with, even though you loved them, you tried, but you just couldn't let go. I don't know if you have been in a relationship where you notice the other person is not able to give themselves over to you and you wonder what's going on. At the root of it all, most of the time it's fear. That's the reason why, you know, some people say, oh, ladies submit and this and this and this and this and this and this. And I understand that. But have you asked yourself why it's difficult for ladies to submit? Because if a lady naturally loves and respects you, that will come naturally. You don't even have to ask or demand for it. The reason why is that some of the ladies have some kind of fear. And their fears sometimes are really legitimate. Some fear is that, hey, if I follow this guy, I submit my money, I give him my body, I give him everything. Am I sure this guy will not ruin my life? And the reason why is that there are so many stories of ladies that someone they married or dated ruined their life, used them and dumped them. And because they don't want to be dumped, you think that they are holding back and they are guarded. But what is happening is that because they don't want to be dumped, that's why they're the way they are. There was someone that took away our virginity in the name of I will marry you. But now where's the guy? The guy is gone five years right now, moved on with another lady. And the lady is stuck with the guilt that I thought I'll be my number one and my final. So people have fears. People have fears. And 
You know, fear paralyzes. Have you seen a man that can take care of a woman, can do so much for the woman, can, you know, really spoil her? The woman comes and say, oh, can you just do this for me? And it's something insignificant, something they can really do. And, you know, you wait one month, two months, and you wonder why he's not doing it. He could be stingy. I'm not denying that. But some all the time is because at the root of this, this guy is really afraid. He's really afraid that why is this girl asking me for stuff? Why is he asking for money? Am I sure she loves me or she lost my money? What will happen if I don't give it to her? I want to see what she would do. But the reason what happens to that guy is this. The guy is paralyzed by fear because he's not able to express his love freely because fear is holding him back. The fear is that is this person out to cheat me? And that's why it's very important for all of us to deal with fear. Everyone connected to this, you deal with it. I want to list the kind of fear you're dealing with in your relationship, dealing with in your marriage. And this is what I want to say about fear because I want to give you some easy steps on how to resolve your fear. Number one, accept your fear. You know, sometimes when you talk to people that have, or people of faith, they, sometimes they just, they, it almost seems as if sometimes people of faith are either crazy or they live in an illusion because they have this genuine fear and they choose to ignore it watch this now ignoring your fear will never make it to go away as a matter of fact when your fear comes back it will be bigger stronger and even more gigantic that's what will happen when you have the fear so someone says what do i do with your fear if you have fear about something accept your fear write it down somewhere you know i'm really afraid i will marry late i'm really afraid that my husband will not love me I'm really afraid I will have no child. Right now, your fear. You know why? The only things you can change are the things you have accepted. Whatever you deny, you cannot change. You can only change what you have accepted. Why not accept the fact that there's fear somewhere and let's begin to deal with it? It's like someone that knows I have a medical problem and the person refused to see the doctor and it says, I, I don't want to not have a medical problem. I don't want to know that there's love in my breast. Listen to me. Denying it is not faith. The night is just being presumptuous. What you want to do is to accept what it is and begin to create a pathway for solution. The second thing is this. You want to track your fear. You want to track your fear. Why did I say track your fear? I know, I know, I know a guy that his father was really, really mean and very strict and authoritarian kind of leadership. And the guy grew up and in his marriage, he just found it very difficult to be able to express himself to his wife and to his girlfriend when he was dating. And the reason was very simple because he hadn't seen him modeled. And the reason I'm saying so is that the moment you're able to track your fear, you'll know what to do with it. The moment you're able to track your fear, you will know what to do with your fear. So where is this fear coming from? Where did I pick it from? I, I, I came across a lady and the lady said, well, you know the thing, I, I was just talking and I just said that, you know what, as you speak to me, I just really sense from all of your stories that you come like a user. Maybe that's why you've not been able to get married. And she said, and she said, well, I'm not a user. I said, okay, let's take a stock. I said, all the people you've dated, we took a stock. I'm like, do you notice in all the relationships you have been, they actually got um, what you got from them, but they didn't really get from you. She said, wow. And we saw the train and we're like, oh my God. I didn't even realize that. And I said, why do you think you are so out to receive and you're not out to give? Then we began to think. And she said, when I was young, my mother ran a local restaurant and I used to help her out. And some of the random men would come to the restaurant and it hit my bum and it was a lot of abuse. And it said, my mother kind of wanted to put in, you know, in retrospect is what she did, but she didn't say that way. Wanted to kind of put in some barrier against men. Would say, say, all these men, they're useless. All these men, they just want to take your body and this and this and speak so negatively about men. He said, since that time, when I think of men, I'm highly guarded because my framework says they've come to take. So, they, you know, some guarded, they don't take something. She's of a marriageable age right now. She was told that when she was maybe about 10 or thereabout. But the key thing is that that thing has begun to affect her. I'm only saying to you this. Sometimes the fear you have is because of how you saw your parents grow up, the, the abuse you saw in your own family, something you read on social media, something that happened to your friend. And you need to track the fear. You know why? You need to track the fear to know the fear source and cut it off. 
Because if we deal with the fear today, you will go back to the source and become afraid again. You need to track it, know the source and cut it off. The second reason why you need to you do track the fear is this. You need to track the fear. Is that a spiritual kind of fear that has to be dealt with from a place of the spirit or is a natural kind of fear? And if you're asking, how do I deal with a spiritual fear? I just want to ask you, Monday to Friday, I lead a very powerful prayer meeting, 6.30 a.m., where people experience the power of God breaking, delays, life-changing. Join me, and I will be able to show you that. But I want to talk about the natural fear, the natural fear, the natural fear. So why am I tracking my fear? Number one, to know, what, to, know, to know how to cut it off. Number two, to know how to deal with it. Number three, to know if it's natural or it's spiritual. Listen, so how do I do natural fear? Good. The first thing you want to do is this when you have fear, and this will shock you. Fear is an emotion, especially when it's natural. Sometimes, not all the fear is bad if you know how to handle your fear. The first thing you have to do if you have relationship fear, I fear I'll not get married, I fear that I'll not find someone that will love me, I fear I'll not find a good man, I fear that I will, find a, I will not find a girl that will take my money away. If you have those kind of fears, the first thing you want to do is this not deny your fear, not, not just track your fear is to understand your fear. What does it mean to understand your fear? It's a very simple thing. Ask, you, ask yourself, make your fear your friend. Ask yourself, okay, I'm afraid of this. Why am I afraid of it? You know why? In the first line, I told you capture your fear. Any thought you can question, you can dissolve. But any thought that you feel so emotional about, you cannot hold, you cannot write, because it's so touchy to you, you cannot do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. So, what I'm saying is this. Please, understand your fear. Understand your fear. Why am I afraid? Because sometimes, your fear is actually good. Because your fear actually warns you of something you are ignoring. That's what your fear does. Sometimes, your fear is actually working for your favor. And that's why I say, make fear your best friend. I'll give an example. So, this girl is dating this guy. And, you know, they've spent so much time together. Two years dating. He hasn't met the friends. He hasn't met some people that are significant. And the guy is painting all those big pictures. They've been to his house just once. They normally would meet in restaurants or go to hotels or hang out. And the lady has a genuine fear that, is this guy hiding something? The, the truth is that you may actually be right because for your mind to say that to you, he may be hiding something. Maybe that's the reason why he has not been able to expose himself the way he should expose himself to you. So if you have that kind of fear, what should you do next? The next thing you really want to do is, number one, slow down. You know why? Because time will reveal what is real and what's not real. Time will reveal what is packaging and what is true content. Time is going to reveal what is authentic and what is what China made. Time is going to reveal all those things to you. Time is going to reveal all those things to you. So, but the point is that most people, when they have those kind of fears, there are two things. They either let their fear, so some ladies, when they have that fear, they say, let's break up, and that's it. I know what to do. They just allow their fear, paralyze them, and their fear becomes a prison. But what you want to do is that, let fear be your friend. You understand that the reason I'm afraid, when fear is your friend, this is what happens to you. You genuinely begin to understand the reason you are afraid, and you tackle it from the root. So, you understand that, okay, the reason I'm afraid is this. There's a reason why. Because I've not seen, I've not gotten information, close contact with this guy. I'm dating for two years. It might be a ghost guy. It might be hiding something. So, once you know that, then you begin to make a plan to say, okay, you know what? Um, is there a way I can know some more things about yourself just because of what it is? Let's say a guy fears that this lady you marry is materialistic and is for going for his money. Very good. That's how you feel. That's a fear that you don't want to marry someone that way. Question, you know, okay, how do I want to solve this fear? Have conversations. You can have conversations to see how she spends money, what her value is. Give her money, see how she spends it, because you can actually check it out. So what I'm saying is that your, your, your fears are not something that it's just evil. Sometimes your fears will help you. This is why I see fear sometimes. Fear can either be a caution sign. What's a caution sign? Once your fear rises up, it tells you to slow down. Or when you don't know how to handle fear, fear can be a prison. What's a prison? Because of your fear, you cannot move forward. Because of your fear, you can't do anything. Let me give you an example. Let's say a lady is divorced and she wants to remarry. And she's thinking of remarriage and she has fears. You have the reason to be fearful because you've just gone through a bad experience. The reason why you have fear is this. Your fear is just saying something to you. 
hope i'm not going to make the second mistake and not hope i'm not going to make a mistake a second time hope i'm going to find someone to love me and love the kids that i have and those things see once you understand your fear you understand what it's saying you can write down those things and begin to ask questions this is my assignment to you today you know i want to say what is the fear that i have that's relationship then ask yourself why write the question and begin to ask yourself what can i do to litigate against the fear that i have what can i do to litigate against the fear that i have what can i do to litigate against the fear that i have so let's say something that you have a fear that because of your size that you will not be able to find someone that will love or love or marry you just because of how you feel it will affect your self-esteem so because and when you affect your self-esteem you're going to send out that vibe and that signal to people that i'm not worthy of your love i don't feel great about myself i don't think i'm a great person and everybody's going to respond to you that way but because you already feel that way that because of my size nobody's going to love me what should you do you already have that fear inside you why not do something about your size if your size is not important to you that's not important to me but if it becomes an issue that makes you feel afraid it's something you can do something about what most people do is there's two things they either ignore their fear or they allow their fear to put them in prison your fear puts you in prison where you become so paralyzed that you can never go ahead and do something and that's what you want to change today so how do you deal with fear that's the way you do with natural fear you understand you are able to capture your fear you understand what the fear is and you create a plan you create a plan so your fear says where you are there are not many people that are interested in you because of your skin color or background of your social network that fear may actually be genuine but instead of you say oh i'm doomed i'll not find someone to marry you ask yourself how can I be in another community, either through technology? How can I be there virtually by visit and engage more people and expose the numbers I have to marry? Someone asks this question. He says, um, I don't have traction in people asking me out. Well, let me tell you something about dating you need to know. Dating is a function of exposure. Have you noticed something? A lot of newscasters and TV personalities and stars have a lot upon their case just because not because they're more beautiful or they're better than you all those things that say such things are low self-esteem issues the reason why they feel that way is that they are just most exposed to people why for you you just know 1000 people and out of the 1000 people 500 of them are below eight they can't marry you uh, the remaining 300 are below you know uh, what they call it i'm married the main 200 out of the 200 you know out of the 200 150 are engaged really you just have free people that can check you out why not expand your social work social network and you know we can do that we can do that and that's a practical way on how you can make fair your friend and resolve your problems with fear please ask me your question ladies remember next week next week friday which is on the 26th we're having a closed zoom session you know where to set the numbers some of you have sent the numbers there already if we're going to send you a link and all things being called my wife and you know it's going to help us lead this conversation with ladies it's really be powerful i want to invite you to join us this sunday at harvest that it's always a life-changing session if you if you want to experience transformation if you want to see the power of god move if you want to see testimony of god's power the place you want to be this Sunday's harvesters. You can be in Lekki, you can be in Antony, you can be in Bagada, you can be in Ikeja, you can be, you know, you can be online also and join us. If this has blessed you, let me know. Have a great, great, great day. Bye and God bless you.